So you have somebody still trying to connect via audio. We'll get started in just a minute. Let's see if Stephanie's audio can connect here. I don't know if we have parents or students here. I'm kind of assuming we have parents, but. Hi, this is Beth Kinsley. You actually have a book for us. Okay, great. Welcome. All right, it looks like Stephanie got her audio to work. So that's excellent. Hi, Alexandra. Parents, got it, cool. Well, I'm gonna get started um, considering it is quite late here in Copenhagen and I have two little kids. And so I'm at the end of my day, uh, but thank you for joining. And I really am excited to share more about Copenhagen, which is my adopted city. I have lived here just about a year and a half now. And I am the academic director here in Copenhagen. Um, I have a slide here. Here's part of my team um, here in Copenhagen. So I'm Brittany um, and I have a PhD in political science. I used to be a professor for eight years before moving to Copenhagen and kind of redoing my career and working with American students still. So I still get to um, lead American students and now I get to explore the fun world of high school which um, I got to enjoy last summer and it was really one of my most favorite programs. I really loved the high school students. There's so much drive and energy and passion and enthusiasm especially for a topic that I care so much about, which is taking climate action. Um, in this photo here, um, we also have our center director, Karen, who opened the CIEE Study Center in 2018. And my right hand gal, um, Rebecca at the bottom, she's our program coordinator. Um, we have a very small staff. Um, the students uh, will also meet some student workers in the summer, which are Danish students that come in and support the high school program. Um, and we're actually getting a new staff member soon. So this is our kind of core team that does a lot of the coordinating and program planning. Um, so this is who you can become familiar with. I am the American and Rebecca and Karen are both Danish. So there we are in Copenhagen. This a small little country that I have grown to love very much. Um, and just to give you a little bit about Copenhagen and that before we get to the program that you are potentially exploring for your students um, this coming summer. It's hard to believe that we're already talking about summer 2023. Um, but Copenhagen is, uh, you know, seeped with this history, this Viking history, which I've learned a lot more about because we also teach a course on Vikings. But now it is this, you know, lively, modern city um, with, you know, it's the safest city in the world, according to The Economist, um, with efficient, clean, uh, safe public transportation. Uh, we have clean enough harbors for our students to swim in, and the high school students last year also got to explore uh, swimming in the Copenhagen harbors. Uh, I, like it says here, we have low crime rates, uh, and we are a city of bikers. So most of my staff, including myself, uh, commutes to work by bike, um, and most Copenhageners actually commute to work or school by bike. Um, we're the first uh, capital in the world to ple pledge to be carbon neutral by 2025, making it the greenest, one of the greenest cities in the world. Um, and that's something that the students in this program explore in great, great detail, um, how Copenhagen is going about this and maybe some, um, you know, methods and policies and strategies that they can take back home uh, to their hometowns, uh, to their home states. Um, our study center is in the city center of Copenhagen, uh, Indibu, and we are right by the one of the main metro lines, um, and we are in walking distance to the beautiful Newhound, uh, the background that I'm sitting in front of, and the students are, those are our high school students from last summer. Um, so it's, it's really an idyllic um, 
setting for, for such a program. Um, in terms of what our students are doing on this program, like I said, they can be swimming in the clean harbor pools and the beach in Copenhagen. Um, last summer, um, so you see the bottom that's Ama Strand Park, um, you know, just, just outside of the city. I was actually really close to the student housing. Um, we do cultural activities where we take our students it's not only just about climate change and climate science um, but we visit historic castles and museums um, and we take our students to what is called the youth island which is used to be um, a military outpost uh, outside of copenhagen where they get to it's now been an island that's donated to the youth of Denmark and they run uh, team building exercises and we take a little boat out there and the students get to swim and they get to play games and that's a lot of fun. Um, we've taken the students last summer to a Viking village, which was also the day of midsummer. So they got to um, live like a Viking for a day, uh, chop wood and make their own bread on an open fire. And then they got to explore um, Sankt Hans, which is the midsummer celebration in the evening. Uh, and we took the students to Aarhus um, as a day trip. And then our overnight trip, which we take with the high school students, um, the picture at the top left is from some of our high school students from the US um, that just finished a soccer game with some Danish students they met on the island of Samsø, um, which is a sustainable island about, I don't know, like three, four hour commute outside of um, Copenhagen. And we get to stay at a um, resort center and learn about how the island has become sustainable and how the community has worked together to make progress on being carbon neutral. And of course, we have lots of hygge, which is this idea of coziness. And that's something we're very much embracing at this time of year, which is our winter months where we have more darkness. Um, but in the summer months, there is a lot of light and the students will get light until 11 p.m. Um, not so much the case right now. Um, let's see. So in terms of a typical week for your high schoolers over the summer program, and I see a typo there, hello. Uh, a typical week includes a lot of class time actually. And uh, I'm very proud to say that we've hired some exceptional uh, instructors for this particular program. I mean, we are seeped with these amazing people who are in touch with climate action but who are also incredible communicators and just passionate about working with young people. So I have two instructors, Daniel and Esther, who are excited to come back um, and teach high schoolers again next summer. Um, Esther is even uh, the main subject of a documentary film on taking climate action. Um, Daniel has his own um, organizations, its own nonprofit, promoting uh, climate action and spreading climate education um, to others. Um, and they're just super wonderful people. So they spend a lot of time with Daniel and Esther. Um, and we do some survival Danish with our lovely Danish instructor Nils. Uh, the students always enjoy their time with Nils. I enjoy my time with Nils. Um, there are many, many not only I talked about museums and historical sites, but there's those co-curricular activities that are related to the, the contents of the courses that we've built. Um, and I'm really proud to say that I had a hand in building this curriculum um, and it really shaped up nicely. Uh, so when we talk about UN sustainability goals, we actually take the students to the UN city and get a tour. Um, when we talk about urban farming, we take the students to an urban garden and they get a tour uh, and they learn about the process of building building green spaces uh, in the city. Um, when we talk about sustainability and business, we take the students, which they love, um, to Tivoli Gardens, and they actually have a sustainability tour. And then they get an afternoon with a ride, an unlimited ride pass in Tivoli Gardens, which is the second oldest amusement park in the world, um, and is one of my favorite places on earth. Um, this is a picture of the students exploring the sustainable architecture in Nordhalm. Um, so there's just an abundance of activities. We, we jam pack 
the, the experience for the students. We're trying to incorporate some more free time because I know the students really appreciated their free time to explore the city and to you know meet new friends and really make those connections with the other students. Um, in terms of, of food on the program, we've really worked to create some some balanced food choices for the students, although we've learned that American high schoolers really just like the basics. Um, so but despite trying to go for a very um, a fresh vegetarian buffet, our students were kind of more inclined to want to go to the hot dog stand outside of the study center. Um, but we do like to have uh, meals together at our study center. We've got a really good catering company that comes and does family meals for us, essentially. Um, but some nights we'll be out together in the city or the students can have a meal stipend so they can kind of um, eat on their own. And of course, we have the program leaders who help them um, go to the grocery store and, and help them if they want to cook anything. Um, here's some pictures of our students from last um, summer. Uh, the one at the top left is um, at this, the student housing that we had for the students. So actually last summer we had them in single rooms um, with our program leaders um, at a place called Base Camp. So they have their own bed, their own bathroom, their own little desk and their own little tea kitchen and their own room. Um, and then we have at the bottom a picture of the students eating breakfast at the cafe um, that provided amazing um, organic baked goods for them every single morning. I can tell you that uh, the staff really appreciated the leftovers. And then on the right, we have our community dinner that we took our students to, which is something really unique to Copenhagen. Um, you know, COVID, COVID restrictions permitting, um, they'd serve these, these meals together at this old church and the students really enjoy this experience. So we do try to get them out and about and get them to interact um, with the community. Um, here's some pictures of our study center. Actually, tonight as we speak, our college students are sitting just like this, um, watching the movie Frozen in Danish um, and embracing that hygge uh, tonight. But we do have this lovely lounge center. Um, and on the left, the, the turret-like building is our building. And that front kind of semi-circle window above the 7-Eleven, that is our student lounge. Uh, so it is an incredibly beautiful space, um, and we have three different classrooms that we use there, and that's also where the staff has their office space. Um, you are encouraged uh, to uh, join us on Instagram. We have a part-time student worker who is very good at populating the CIE Copenhagen Instagram. Every week, she also does kind of a, a trip planner, I, I would say, um, for the students who are here, telling them what events are upcoming in the city, not just with our program, but just what's going on. Um, and we also have a Facebook page, but our Instagram is probably the most uh, visited sites, I would say. Um, and just to round off my end of the presentation, I just want to say if, you know, if you have your students or you as a student submit your application by December 1st, you have that chance to win a free flight to Copenhagen, which would be great, uh, great, great in terms of savings over the summer. Um, and alumni can save you $200 if you start your application through their referral link. So connect with these lovely faces here. We were uh, going to have our um, alumni join us tonight, um, but she is also applying to colleges. I'm writing her a letter of uh, uh, a letter of recommendation for college. It's Gabby, actually. She's in the middle of this picture with a bright smile and a green sweater on. Um, but we do keep in touch with some of our students if they let us. And um, I think that's the end of my slideshow. So I will leave it to you to ask some questions if you have any. And I totally stole the mic from McKenna, who has been here um, and manning the chat and doing all the administration for me. So thank you, McKenna. I just took away the show and didn't introduce you. No uh, worries. <laughs> So I have a question uh, here about the language requirements. Um, there is not 
I, I, I'm not exactly sure what you mean, Stephanie. Um, there is, we have six hours of survival Danish and really we mean like, you know, learning a few Danish phrases because the Danish language is incredibly difficult. And you can ask me who is not speaking Danish uh, right now <laughs> um, in my day to day. And most everyone you will encounter, and especially in Copenhagen, speaks English. Um, but we do want our students to, um, you know, get some familiarity with the language and the culture. Well, and yes, a person can come in knowing no Danish language whatsoever and be completely fine here. Um, I speak as a person who lives here and has residency here. Um, my kids speak fluent Danish and I am at a Babel level of Danish at this point. So yes, it is very easy to navigate the city um, and everyone is quite friendly as well. Uh, our program leaders that we have come with the high school students, they don't speak a lick of Danish and they get along very well within the city. Um, I, I've, I've run into maybe one person living here a year and a half that cannot communicate with me in English. So it's a very, very easy city to navigate without knowing the language. And you're welcome. Any other questions? The specifics of the curriculum. Yes, I'm happy to help with that, Beth. Um, so in terms of the content that the students are learning and in terms of the assignments, because I don't have the syllabus right in front of me, um, but they they start with, an introduction. So in terms of the material, they start with an introduction to climate on the science front, um, learning about, you know, what's the science behind climate change, and then going into some of the solutions, um, some of the policy. And then towards the end of the time in Copenhagen, they get into more of the political sphere um, and thinking kind of strategically about how you put kind of a scientific you know bit of research into action how do you make that translation um, and as a social scientist myself that is always the puzzle um, and so you know i like to step in actually at the end of the plot of the time that the students are here because my background is in political science and i have a expertise in American politics. Um, so I really liked having those conversations with the students, but they learn a lot about Danish politics and how it works in Denmark. Um, so it's it's like this fusion of hard science uh, and social science and political activism. Um, in terms of what they're doing throughout the program, so they're, they're completing reflection journals as they go through. Um, weekly, but they're working towards a final project. And their final project is um, a policy proposal that they draft in a group and then an action item. Um, so, so they have this policy proposal and they have a strategic plan for, for bringing that to action. And then they have to kind of sell it to the public somehow. They have to get that public momentum, that community momentum behind their plan. And so the students get really creative in terms of, is it a digital project? Is it a poster campaign? Is it, we haven't seen any dance yet, um, but TikToks, of course, social media campaigns, um, podcasts, those types of things. Uh, so we really get them to try to be creative and it's a lot of fun to watch what they do at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the session. Um, and then in the middle of the, uh, the time that they're here, they also do like a presentation to show that they understand the scientific research. Uh, so it's 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 pretty intensive, I think, for them. Um, but our, again, our instructors are just brilliant at that translation and um, understanding the level at which the students are currently at and kind of working with them and also adapting the curriculum to, to the interests of the students. They're really receptive to you know, if a student sees a particular problem in their community, that they want to encourage that student to explore that topic more. Um, so I think it's really fun to watch that because every program becomes a little bit different for that reason. So I hope I answered your question, maybe too much detail. 
Um, in terms of volunteer hours, uh, no, they do not earn volunteer hours. Um, according to Danish law, they cannot actually officially be volunteers in Denmark. Um, but I have kind of weaseled my way into the volunteer um, sector uh, through some different campaigns that we've done. Uh, so we actually worked with a woman who is doing a, a cigarette butt collection because turns out in Denmark, we don't have much of a littering problem, but people still do throw their cigarette butts into the street. And so she's done a campaign um, to bring attention to the fact that this is a microplastic and one of the most you know, widespread problems in terms of pollution um, in the world. And uh, so she does art projects with these cigarette butts. Um, my center director is not super happy about the idea of cigarette butt usage, but the students loved it and they had some really creative campaigns last summer. Um, but in terms of like hands-on volunteer, something that's documented, like we can't provide that in the context of Denmark. Um, it's not something that the Danish government allows you to do without a particular type of visa. Yes, no problem. Any other questions? I know we have a small crowd, but... Anything at all. <laughs> all right. Oh, I think Alexandra is trying to come back. I know people are probably popping in and out on their work days. Um, so I appreciate you all coming. Um, do I see Alexandra, do you have any questions? I think I got some questions from Stephanie and Beth, but I know you just popped back in. If you had any final questions for us before we wrap up this short little session. Great. <laughs> well, if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out um, to the CIEE team in the US or us at the city center. Um, there we go, McKenna has the um, HSA abroad contact. Um, and then you can also, our website is there. Uh, we try to update that website uh, and it gives you a lot of details about the program and some fun pictures. And um, I hopefully look forward to seeing some of your students next summer. We really have a great time here in Copenhagen. So.